searching to be part of something meaningful and to have purpose in our lives. And I was in a place where I had none of those things. And I was working at a rental car company and I felt like if I really apply myself and I work really hard for the next 20 years, I will be amazing at renting cars. And that was not something that excited me. Because of that, I had this crisis of meaning. What's the purpose of my existence? What's the purpose of existence in the first place? I decided I just have to completely rearrange the path that I'm on, and that's where the opportunity to go to Malawi fell in my lap, and I quit my job, got my shots, and 30 days later I was on a plane to Malawi, Africa, a country I hadn't even heard of two months before. When I landed in Malawi, I met a man named Blessings, and Blessings is this incredible, gentle-spirited man who introduced me to his village and his people that he works with, and it was through him that I got to meet the people of Malawi. In particular, I met a girl named Emily. Emily was an orphan because her mom didn't have $20 to take herself to the hospital. So $20 um, here in Malawi is, is a lot of money to help someone. And here we are talking of a life that was lost just because of that. It was almost incomprehensible. Here is a girl full of hope that sometimes you find that is, does she have a future? Can we help her and, uh, with the limited resources that are there? I asked Blessings what was it that she needed most right now, and he said that she was living in a house that was really run down, and so if we raised $1,000, we could build her a brand new house. Emily still lives in that house to this day. This moment where I met Emily and I was able to be a part of her story was one of the first times where I felt like I had found direction and purpose in my life. I knew that that mattered. Like I could see the transformation happen in real time with Emily. I wanted to give other people the same ability to see how giving to those in need matters. It makes a difference. And you can know it makes a difference because you can see it with your own two eyes. And so this was kind of a signal that I paid attention to and I thought I need to continue on with this. I need to keep going in this direction. Welcome to Village Fridays, the series where once a week you get to be a part of helping people in a remote Malawian village. This is my friend Rosina. She's from the village of Munchumpu, and I want to show you something about her house. You're looking at the entirety of her house right here, but there's one problem with it. Hi everyone back at home. I'm making a video to thank my mom's painting class. Uh, a few weeks ago, cochlear implant into her head, so you can see kind of the outline right here. It's in her head. Friend Bill gave him a really big Christmas present, and Godfrey needed help taking it home. Which is the liver failure. Okay. Um, but then Malawi, they don't do that. And to that I say, Instead of looking at the people you can't help, look at the ones that you can. I wanted to find some of the highest impact ways that we could help people in need, and I knew that working with the local people was the way to do that. When I asked them, what do you think Malawi needs, one of the answers I kept hearing over and over and over again was girls' education. Everyone believed that when you educate girls in Malawi, you educate the nation. And that's where I met Tia. But we were not talking. He was very quiet. I think hi, hi was enough. Tia is a force of nature. The first time I met her, she was beaming with determination to build this girls' school. Blessing started telling me, you know what? Greatest fundraising for this. Greatest fundraising for them. I just said, oh, God bless him. Until one day, I made great. She presented me with a plan that she had been working on for seven years. She had everything in place. All she needed was the funding. The fire started to ignite to say, I think we can do this. But how? It's when great came in 2016. He just said, I want to take up this challenge. I hear you want to do a school. I have never fundraised for such a big project. We're all going to try. Tia needed $100,000 to kickstart this girls' school. That was in January. September of that year, we needed to start the school. 
and we had nothing. I knew that in order to fundraise for Girl Shine Academy, we would have to do things differently than anyone else had done things before. And then God gave us an idea, the weekly fundraising. Where people got to follow along with the progress and see how their donations were taking effect in real time. Here's how it's gonna work. We need to fundraise a lot to make this happen. We need to forget that the word passive even exists. Each week, we're gonna raise enough money to begin the next stage of construction. Past week, we asked you to donate $4,000 to get the excavation started, and there were 55 of you who donated. I wanna say a special thank you to everyone who donated this past week. With 24 hours left, we still had two and you see a video, you're gonna see something that starts to look like a legit school. The record number of 181 people donated to this last week. One date that you wanna put on your calendar is July 31st. That's the date that we hold entrance exams for Girls Shine Academy. Week four. Week five, week six, week seven, eight, up to week 12. Structures were up. It was incomprehensible. We couldn't imagine. We could come and we all just in awe. Today is going to go down as one of the best days in my entire life. Back in January, I stood in the middle of this field and there was grass and weeds up to my waist. And now, today, we have people. We have parents, students, and teachers all here today because a small group of people decided that it wouldn't be crazy if we put a girls' school right here in the middle of this rural Malawian village. A week to do, but today we are starting a new beginning. In 2016, the girls that we started with graduated and most of them are the first girls in the villages to graduate. Today we have over 300 girls in attendance. When I first launched the campaign to fundraise for Girls Shine Academy, I was not even sure it would work. I just knew it was the right thing to try and fundraise for it. But what I discovered was that showing people how their money was being used effectively and responsibly created this movement. When I first came to Malawi three years ago, I had all these idealistic ideas about making a real contribution to this country that I've come to fall in love with. And thanks to you, the donors, the people who have helped get the word out, you've helped make that a reality in a very real and tangible way. And what makes this whole thing even more special is that you were also able to make a lasting contribution to this country with me. 12 plaques, several hundred names, and a school might be the best thing I ever get to do in my entire life. And if that's the case, I'm really happy about that. Through Graves Shine, through this fundraising, I felt God's calling me that I can do more. I said, all right, let's, let's see how it goes. And there now we have donors. Donorcy was launched three weeks after the first day of Girl Shine Academy. In that moment, I knew that I had found my purpose. I wanted to give that opportunity to people all over the world. No matter where you are, you can just go to donorcy.com. You can see real people who are in need right now, and you can be a part of changing their life. Donacy is touching lives. It's, it's not just about, you know, uh, here's what we did. Like, people have been helped. Lives have been changed. At Donacy, we partner with vetted individuals all over the world. They've identified that in their specific communities, these are the people that donors have the greatest opportunity to make a difference in their lives. You get to see the exact person that you're helping, and then, after you make your donation, the person that you helped will send you a thank you message and show you the impact of your donation. Thank you so much for your support. We have bought the mattress from Mama Deboa. Now she can stay. I want to say thank you for providing us a table to read. We're here with thank JB. You. We want to say thank you so much. Hello, Sean. Thank you so much for giving Moses Floor Project. And she said thank you very much, guys, for supporting. This financial support is going to help me to accomplish my dreams. A lot of times when you give to charity, you don't know where your money goes and you don't get to experience the emotional connection that is a crucial part of helping people. At Donorsy, we prioritize this. We want you to not only trust that your donations are making a difference, 
We want you to experience the good your donations are doing and see the joy that you create. Thank you, Annabelle. Aww. Thank you for helping Emily. To see the videos, to be able to connect with those who are on the and ground. One click of a button and you just met a need. Yeah, we use donors all the time and even though Timothy and Jackson sometimes can only give a dollar or two from their allowance. You see where it ends up. Um, and it makes you kind of feel like part of the donor sees family. It's great to know that I can join with other people and we can make a difference in the world. So I love donor C. At Donor C, there are all sorts of needs of people just like Emily and just like Girls Shine Academy. People who need your help and where a small amount of money makes a massive difference in their lives. So I encourage you to go to Donor C today, pick out your very first Donor C project, give to it, it can be any amount, large or small, and then we'll send you a video update showing you the impact that you made and the joy you created.